There's a popular saying that fans of Mikey Pipes should be very familiar with, and that is, if you're not testing, you're just guessing. And that's absolutely true. But you can still be guessing with your testing without understanding the logic and timing behind control wiring. This is what often leads to situations where we're swapping out parts, but the problem's still there. So we're going to dive into the logic behind control wiring so that we can understand what components are supposed to do, how they do them, and when they do them. So today we're going to do that with defrost control boards and split system heat pumps. So if you're ready to learn, let's get started. All right, so what I have here is a schematic I pulled up of a defrost control board, and I cleaned it up a little bit. I took the toots and the whistles out, the extra things that you're not always going to see in these systems. So what you're seeing here is brass tacks. It's bare bones. Everything we're going to cover in this video is going to be universal on all conventional split system heat pumps. All of the voltage in our entire system is going to be 24 volts alternating current. And no matter where you detect power in a system, whether it's the indoor control board, the thermostat, the defrost control board outside, it all comes from the same place. And that is a transformer located inside the indoor air handler. Now, alternating current means you always need two wires to complete the circuit. So one wire is going to be a path from the source, which is the transformer. It's going to go through a control device, and then there's going to be another path going back to the transformer again. So think of every circuit like a circle. Now, when it comes to control wiring, you're you're always going to see multiple wires making up that circle and multiple components. So, for example, what we see here is we see one wire from the transformer taking 24 volts to the air handler control board. From the air handler control board to the thermostat to our terminal, the Y terminal is going to get energized to the defrost control board. From the defrost control board, it goes to the contactor and it eventually makes its way back to the transformer on common. So, you can see how you're always going to have multiple wires in that circle. So, as we go through this... Uh, diagrams and these wirings just keep in mind that we're always trying to complete a circle here all right so going back to our schematic we see all our terminals over here to the left and this is where we hook up our thermostat wires and we can see we already have a circle being completed on on this defrost control board here we have one path coming in on our, our terminal 24 volts and we have another path that makes it back to the transform on the common so you can see we already have like a power circuit circle going on right here now this R terminal is always going to be a constant power source that means we're always going to detect 24 volts there if you don't have 24 volts there um, either the power is off a wire is bad or some component in that circle is not working properly now our O terminal and our Y terminals here are input signals. These are 24 volt signals that come directly from the thermostat. So our O terminal is for the reversing valve. When the thermostat is in cooling mode, it's going to send 24 volts on this terminal and that is going to put the reversing valve in a cooling position. The Y terminal is for the contactor that when the thermostat is calling for either heating or cooling mode, it doesn't matter which one, that Y terminal is going to get power that's going to pull in the contactor and that will turn on the compressor and the outdoor condenser fan motor. So going back to our circle analogy here, we can see that the transformer is sending 24 volts to the control board and the air handler, from there to the R terminal on the thermostat. When the thermostat calls for cooling, it is going to send a signal out on that Y terminal from the thermostat to the Y terminal on the defrost control board. And this is where we could start picking up our schematic on that Y terminal. From that Y terminal, it's going to go through a, a timer, which then eventually goes to the contactor. Now the contactor is going to pull in, outdoor unit is going to turn on, and and from the contactor, we're going to make our way back to common, which makes its path back to the transformer again. So what this time relay here is, it's a feature that's worked into the circuit that's designed to help uh, protect the compressor. Whenever your compressor shuts down, you want the pressures in there to kind of equalize again before it starts back up. Otherwise, it can actually cause damage to the compressor. So whenever a compressor shuts down, this timer will open that circuit and it will not reclose again until a three or a five minute time period elapses. Um, so even if you had a 24 volt signal on that wire, if it's within Within that three or five minutes of the compressor shutting down, it's not going to make it to the contactor. Now, thermostats also have this feature worked into them. So if you're ever to take your thermostat and go directly from cooling to heating or directly from heating to cooling, you might see a little blinking light in there. And it's the same thing. It's a time delay worked into the thermostat to help uh, protect the compressor from short cycling. 
Now, thermostats always send out multiple signals. So in cooling mode, for example, it's not just going to send a signal out on that Y terminal to turn on the compressor and the condenser fan. It's also going to send a signal out on that O terminal to make sure our reversing valve is actually in the cooling position. Thermostat's also going to send a signal out on the G wire to turn the blower motor on in the air handler. So we can see here that we have our original power circuit here for the contactor that turns on the outdoor unit. And then we have a secondary circle working off of that one to put our reversing valve into the cooling position. But you can see we always have circles. We're always completing circuits. So from the thermostat, we're going to see the 24 volts going from the O terminal to the O terminal on the defrost control board, which is where we can pick up on our schematic. From the O terminal on the control board, it's going to go to the reversing valve and make its way back to common, which goes back to the transformer and the air handler. Now this circuit we just went over is very typical of most of the major brands out there, your Train, your Carriers, your Goodmans, um, because on these brands the reversing valve defaults into the heating position. So what that means is that the reversing valve is always in a heating position when it's not powered. When we want to put it in cooling mode we have to power it. But on systems like Reams and Ruds it's exactly the opposite. These reversing valves default in a cooling position. So we only need to power it up in heating mode to Make them switch over to heating position. So on reams and ruts, for example, you're not going to have O terminals, you're going to have B terminals, um, and those terminals are only going to get powered in heating mode rather than cooling mode. But it's the same exact circuit, it's the same exact circle, it's just different letter terminal and a different color wire. So everything we covered up to this point is your standard heating and cooling modes, uh, with the notable exception, of course, with reversing valves with the different brands. So what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on actual defrost cycles here, and this is we're going back to a universal principles here that apply no matter what the brands are so the first thing we're going to focus on is this defrost thermostat right here now every defrost control board needs two conditions met in order to go into an actual defrost cycle and this defrost thermostat is one of those two conditions now this is a sensor that clamps onto the copper coil of the condensing unit itself and it monitors the temperature of the coil. Now this switch closes when the temperature drops below the freezing point of water. So when we look at this sensor, we could see two wires going to it, and that's what we see on our schematic here. We see one wire coming off of that power wire, that R, going into the defrost thermostat, and the other one coming out, going back to the control board uh, logic. Now when this defrost thermostat is closed below the freezing point, it will allow the 24 volts to travel through to the control logic. Now the second thing that the defrost control board is going to monitor to initiate a defrost cycle is a signal on the Y wire. So whenever the defrost control board determines that it's receiving a signal both from the defrost thermostat and from the Y terminal, it will start a timer. Now this timer is only going to count when both of those signals are present at the same time. So you have to have 24 volts from the thermostat and 24 volts from the Y terminal for the timer to actually start counting. Now when the logic doesn't detect a signal from the Y terminal, it will pause the counter. So when the thermostat inside the house satisfies, let's say the temperature is met and the cycle ends, this timer is going to pause right where it stopped. And when the temperature inside the house drops down again, the thermostat calls for another heating cycle and we get another signal on that Y terminal, the counter will then begin where it left off and continue counting more until the end of that cycle and then it'll pause again. Now this timer is going to continue until it hits a preset point of time that is visible on the defrost control board itself. So you can see here in this picture, we have a 30 minute, a 60 minute, and a 90 minute interval. And we have this jumper on this 60 minute terminal. So whenever this counter hits 60 minutes of total runtime and that 24 volts is still present from that defrost thermostat sensor, it is going to initiate a defrost mode. Now, if we lose that signal from the defrost thermostat sensor at any time, this thermostat timer will reset itself and begin at zero all over again. So now let's look at what actually happens during a defrost cycle. There's gonna be a couple of things. First of all, you're gonna have two relays. One of them is gonna open, one of them is going to close. 
the relays that are going to close we see in our schematic right here and as you can see these relays feed off of this 24 volt R wire that we originally started this whole lesson off with so you're always going to have power on that wire and when these relays close we could see that we're now creating another circle that is going to go through this W terminal and this is going to go up to ultimately turn on the heat strips in our air handler. This relay here is also going to close and we will have 24 volts traveling through that relay to the reversing valve to put it in a cooling position and the common comes back to the transforming air handler. So we need this reversing valve to be in the cooling position because in the cooling position the reversing valve directs the hot gases coming out of the compressor through the outdoor coil in the condensing unit which is what it does in cooling mode and that's what exactly what we want to do because we want to melt the ice off the coil outside and we want the heat strips inside to be activated because we want the house to continue being heated during this defrost cycle when we're not actually creating heat from the heat pump system. Now the third thing that happens is we have another relay here. Um, you can see it right here and this goes to your outdoor fan motor and that relay is going to open and the reason why we want to open up that relay and interrupt the circuit that runs the outdoor fan motors because we don't want to continue drawing air across the coil when we're trying to heat it up and melt the ice off of it. So as long as the defrost cycle is uh, running this relay is going to be open and the condenser fan motor will be off but the compressor will continue to run. When a defrost cycle concludes, this relay will reclose, these relays here will reopen, our outdoor fan motor will restart, our heat strips will shut down, our reversing valve will go back to a heating position, and we're back in business creating heat through a heat pump cycle.